Hi guys, it's Damien from Anton. I'm going to talk to you today about the direct CO2 measurement functions in the Pro range. So if you've got a Pro 4 or Pro 6, that's got a direct CO2 infrared sensor fitted. That allows you to do ambient monitoring for CMDDA1 type work or um, commercial catering, that sort of thing. So if you've got one of those analyzers, turn it on. Let's have a look at what it does. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, basically, go into your test menu and then head down to ambient air monitor, which is the test we're gonna use. Um, obviously, you need to zero your instrument and you need to do that in clean air with the probe connected. So this is just a demonstration, I'm not going probe connected here, but take that, take the instrument outside, connect your probe. Once you're confirmed in clean air, it's really important on these tests to do a zero in fresh air, then, then you can hit start. So we'll let that zero and we'll come back when it's ready. Okay, so now we're zeroed, we're presented with this screen. So what you can do, depending on the length of time you want to do the test for, so if you're doing a CMDDA1 type work, it might be a 15 minute test is enough because you're doing it in every room. You might want to do a much longer test to see what happens over a longer period of time. So what you use is the up and down keys here to change the interval. And as you can see, four hours, eight hours, this box here shows you the interval um, sample rate. So every minute, up to eight hours, it's taking a one minute uh, sample. Um, as I go up, now at 12 hours, it goes to two minute intervals. As we keep going through one day, three days, four days, they're now 12 minute intervals, all the way up to seven days is your maximum, and that's now a 30 minute interval. So select the duration you want, but it tells you, um, yeah, when you're gonna get a, a reading. Um, okay, we're not gonna do a seven day test now. Let's go and do a 15 minute test. And what you do next is you hit this button to press to start the test. And again, it's saying, is there enough battery life? Obviously, if we're doing a 50 minute test, we've got two bars, that'll be plenty. If you're doing a seven day test, you really need to run this test with the, um, the charger attached so that it doesn't run out. Once you're ready, you press start, and now we go into a test. So what you, what you can see on screen is your current CO reading, your current CO2 level, your peak, and your, oh sorry, I haven't pressed start yet. There you go, so the duration of the test is there, and I haven't hit the start button, now, that, now we're started. So what you've got is your CO reading, your CO2 is current, your peak, and then your average over the whole test. And what this will do as a 15 minute test is every minute it will log a recording. Now, in typical Blue Peter fashion, I did a 30 minute test early today with a couple of little peaks of CO2, which is just me breathing on it, but it was, it, it's enough to show you what this um, test will look like when it's completed. Um, you can let it run to, to completion. This will obviously run it to, to 15 minutes. And at that point, you can then save it, whatever else. Or if you want to finish it early, you can press escape and quit the test early, but obviously um, you, know, you, you haven't completed the test. So, um, but when you're at that stage, whether it's finished properly or like this, when I've fi finished early, you can save it into the logs. Um, and I'm gonna show you about printing um, and, and maybe Bluetoothing the report um, in a second. But yeah, you might wanna save it into your log and then you can then um, use that again later. Okay, so now we've completed the test and we've stored it in the log. Um, I'm going to show you this other one. So I go over to my stored logs. Okay, um, browse all logs. Uh, and that's the one we just did, which was a failed one or a short one. And this is one I did about an hour ago. So I'm going to go in here and here again, I can see the information. So it's a 30 minute test. The peak CO2 was 4,986 ppm and the average CO2 was 9, uh, 693 ppm. So if I want to print that and get a report, I can hit the print button. Um, now again, if I do that and turn my printer on and I press print, um, uh, there we are, I'm gonna get a very long report, which I'll show you in a second, because it's gonna have 30 um, readings for the peak and average CO, and it's gonna give me 30 readings for the peak and average CO2. So you can see this is quickly turning into a bit of an Andrex advert, um, but we have got a very, very long report there with all the CO readings and all the CO2 readings. Obviously, that isn't ideal. You don't necessarily want to be printing out, especially if you've done a seven day test, you know, that could be an enormous piece of paper. So what we do, if we look on the screen now, um, if I want to reduce that down, I can go in and say, right, I don't want to um, print a, or, or show on the report um, an interval if I've got, say, let's say above one PPM, um, and or if I now go down to the CO2, as I increase the 
this number here, this the CO, you can see the number of samples is coming down. So if, uh, at 500 ppm and above, I've still got all 30 samples selected. If I go up to 600, that drops to 10 samples. Let's say there's eight. So there's, at 700 ppm, there's only eight intervals that are recorded above 700 ppm. So that's kind of like, it just cuts out that, that massive number of 30, and it's now a much more manageable um, number. So if I print that again, uh, oh, print. Okay, now when I print the same report from the same test, you will see it only shows the eight um, samples of interest. So we didn't have any CO luckily in the, in the room where we were testing this, but the CO did fluctuate and it was basically, like I said, me breathing on it. So within the first minute, I put a little breath onto it and we got a peak of 2,877 and then an average of in that minute of um, 1,000, 400 odd but then later on and you can see it then settled down and cleared and then later on I breathe in it again at seven minutes and you can see another peak and it disappearing and then again at um, 24 minutes so you're not interested in all the zeros and all the, you know, the normal ambient levels that just allows you to concentrate we started the um, log at three, uh, 11 o'clock so you know at 11.02 or 11.01 we got a peak then so it helps you to sort of understand what's happening because um, obviously you're not going to stand and look at the analyzer for seven days. It helps you to create a report that very, very quickly helps you zone in on when the um, incidents were happening. Now, you can also, if I escape from that, that's the printer, but with our, because this is a, a Pro 6, this particular one, um, but any instrument that's fitted with the direct CO2 sensor will also have Bluetooth. If I long hold that button, I can toggle between printer and Bluetooth and that now I can send that same style report again, li you know, limiting the number of um, reports you put on a piece of paper. You don't want again 30 or 500 odd reports. You, you want to limit it down to the relevant incidents. You can send that to your um, Sprint mobile app, which is available free on iOS and Android. So it allows you to produce a really, really clear and concise um, CO and CO2 ambient air log for any, any um, CMDDA1 style work you might want to do. Hopefully that's useful. Any questions, jump on our website, give us a call. Thank you.